touch all of you on the phone or on the uh, Zoom here. Thank you for your time. We'll try to make it very valuable. Um, this is the uh, uh, second installment here on uh, how to make how to win with streamline it, with your farm and the growers you serve, and how to tie in your seed business and make the genetic potential of every seed you sell have the opportunity to perform at its best. So, uh, Rob McClellan, uh, I'll, I uh, by no means am an agronomist. I'll be relying on folks like Taylor Janicek and some other team members, and then we've brought in some really uh, uh, fun uh, guest speakers to help us through this content today. So we're gonna go through some background, we'll do some introductions, and then we're gonna get into some trends and the agronomic value of fast emergence. And I'm gonna call it, you know, winning, things we say at Streamline are, you know, win at the planner in this race to V5. So many great things can happen if we have a big healthy plant fast and we can canopy before anybody else and uh, we can reduce the stress and get as many rows per round. So I think we really wanna drive all this conversation and how it helps farmers grow corn and soybeans. I will focus more on corn. That's more of my uh, uh, comfort area. Uh, for those of you that might be on from the South with cotton and other crops, uh, we do have Dr. Mario Cirillo on today and I might, for any specialty crops, I might uh, ask you Mario to to step in and help as well as Roger Bowen, who has a, a really large background in special other crops outside the Corn Belt. So I'll apologize up front for my <clears throat> somewhat monolithic uh, approach, but I'll be using corn as kind of the primary uh, crop as we talk today. Um, we'll uh, really get into two, your streamlined leadership have worked very hard to, to license a, a package and layer in some, a product called TuneUp Plus and Prophase Plus. We'll get really into that. We'll break them apart. We'll uh, then get into some questions, concerns, and competition. We'll wrap up. And we'll also, at the wrap up, talk about NutriBoost ZUP, which is a zinc product that you guys have um, in the Streamline portfolio. We'll spend a lot more time at, on the next meeting because it's a large conversation in and of itself. I do want to talk about that just a bit. So objectives, are, why are we here? We're hoping you will gain confidence in discovering needs and positioning the benefits of TuneUp Plus and Prophase to grow your Streamline business and make the seed you sell perform at its absolute best. Real simple. That'll always be our objective uh, for each one of these meetings. Um, Paul, as the managing director uh, there at Streamline has put forth a kind of a, a framework of why, why are we doing this at Rob Seco? Um, and we broke it into build that foundation, establish potential early, and then optimize in season and really in, improve the performance of spray applications. So we did build a foundation about a month ago and now we're gonna really talk about this building uh, early potential. Okay, we also know within the streamline environment, we have this every pass model. Every time a grower across the field, how could you as a seedsman or woman show up at the farm, bring additional value, tie it into the seed discussion and earn more dollars per relationship. So last, last time we talked a lot about residue release. We'll have some data I wanna show at the end of uh, getting lots of positive data in now. Um, and then, but we're gonna really focus in here on two things today with just the hour that we have. Okay, um, the, uh, I wanna introduce some guest speakers um, and I wanna thank them for their time. Uh, the Streamline uh, strategy is based on really licensing the world-class or best-in-class technologies through delivery systems and aligning to seed in a way that's different than the competition. And to do that, we need partners. And we're lucky to have some really good partners that have developed novel technology that, uh, that we can license into TuneUp Plus and Prophase. Um, first of all, um, I want to introduce Roger Bowen. Bowman. Uh, he is the agronomy lead at New Leaf. I believe, Roger, you live in Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. That is um, correct. I, and, well, I live outside of Memphis. Let's let's be correct. Nobody okay. lives in Memphis. L large, uh, very, very extensive background in extension and agronomy and lots of experiences. Thank you so much for being on, Roger. Glad to be here. Uh, 
Dr. Mario Cirillo, you out there? Uh, Mario is a, um, a kind of a big deal as well. Uh, he uh, re works for the Stoller Company. Um, Streamline and other partners have been able to work with Stoller in a relationship to bring very hard to register plant growth regulators to market and biostimulants. We're extremely fortunate to have that relationship given the environment we're in right now. Uh, and Mario is probably one of the foremost uh, uh, scientists in this whole area of plant hormones and how they trigger plant growth and dealing with ABI uh, uh, stressors out there. So he's going to help us through some stuff. And then the Honorable Cliff Watron, are you out there? I'm not sure I saw you yet, Cliff. Yeah. Good morning. Hey, yeah. hey Cliff. Uh, seasoned veteran uh, of many things, um, is currently with Douglas Plant Health, and uh, DPH is a uh, leading um, producer of microbes of all kinds and doing a lot of very interesting, innovative work. And DPH has been, uh, we've, there's a licensing agreement to bring several consortiums of microbes into these products we'll talk about. And Cliff is going to be kind enough to kind of help us understand how that works. So thank you for coming. So uh, anybody, uh, Cliff, Mario, or Roger, if you have anything to amplify or <clears throat> correct, or as we move through here, just, you know, I'm pretty, uh, pretty easy to get along with here. So I'd love your, your feedback. So I'm going to keep this going along again. Thanks and, uh, for being on today. Thanks, All right. Mark. So a lot of you have challenged the Streamline team about the why and the so what. Who cares? Might even be a better way to say it. Why are we bringing these, you know, these products to market? How in the world does this work with seed and why are we spending calories against it? Well, there's a lot of reasons which we can go into, but I, for today, I think there's some trends and things happening in uh, U.S. agriculture that really make this idea of helping plants build fast, big plant tissue emerge at the same time in canopy first. And I think this is a partner called Brandt. Uh, I pulled some of their data. There's four or five things I wanna point out here. Again, I'm piecing this together from more of a business and trend perspective, but I, I see if you guys can connect the dots with me. So this is a 10 year, 10 years of data that shows the relative impact on a study where they put everything in and they take everything away. I don't know, there's a fancy word for that, but I don't know what it is. But a guy named Ed Corgan, many of you have met, runs this. He's run it for a long time. And uh, basically planning date and hybrid variants, both are the key factors in determining high yield and performance. So we're seeing farmers plant earlier and earlier because they're getting bigger in some cases and they got to get more ground covered. Uh, same thing for soybeans, planting date and a variety. Uh, we're really towards the top of variables that impacted total return on investment for these farms. I think it's also interesting to look at the amount of minimum till and no-till increases. The dot I would connect here, gentlemen and ladies, is that we're probably going to be planting into cooler soils with more residue and probably maybe some increased disease pressure. Uh, so another trend that probably leads to the potential of more stressors out there as we plant the crop. The other one is we talked about last week that I love a lot. I mean, you know, population and yield go up over time. I think we all know this. Dr. Bilo, who's uh, been on one of these uh, sessions for us, has asked us this question. I took this right out of his deck, you know, test your knowledge. What happens to the size of plant roots when population increases? You know, they get, it gets smaller. It, it kind of makes sense intuitively. Um, so we got an environment where we're going to go faster earlier. We're going to plant more population. We're going to have smaller root masses. Now there's hybrid differences in this, of course. Um, and we know that at V5 uh, to V6, the number of rows per round are set. Um, we want a big plant that can canopy. 
We know there's about 475 GDUs plus or minus that we need, and that's all we have. So the faster we can get the 475. So all these trends kind of paint a picture. All we also know if you get one skip, what that means to uh, yield. So I'll stop. And this is for the anybody that wants to send a chat. So what are the, you, you all are seed experts on this call. You know, what, what does all these trends mean to hybrid selection implications? Uh, so if we plant earlier at higher populations and cooler soils with less tillage and how big a deal yield is, and we can never change that again, what are the implications for seed selection? And what we're gonna talk about today, obviously this is a setup, being the most subtle man in America, um, what can we do with early season management, right? So maybe you've got some hybrids or varieties that have a little less disease package, a little bit less uh, early season vigor. Uh, that might be a way to match these up. But really, all these trends apply to the plant regardless. I think, obviously, there are tremendous genetic interactions that we will discover, but Early season, we, we really want to help that plant build a big root structure fast, even if it's stressed. We want that plant to be able to harvest a lot of sunlight. We want it to come out of the ground at the same time. And we want to have all the nutrients it needs to mineralize most efficiently NPK and micronutrients from the soil. And if we do those things, we know there's going to be stress. Maybe we'll have a better chance of giving that hybrid its uh, full potential at its genetic, uh, 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 the genetics that are inside that seed. So that's kind of the setup of the why. Uh, if you see a chat, let me know, um, Paul, if you would. So if there's anything coming in, I know it's an active crowd here. Everybody likes to speak up on a Tuesday morning. So um that's why we're here so let's let's get into the meat of this thing and break down the uh agronomic components and the benefits of these two products we're going to start with just you guys have all wanted a lot of yield data we need data i know i grew up selling seed corn the first five years of my career and boy sure would be nice if you had some data that says how these hybrids work so uh we're starting to get a lot more of this in this is a a a, a dealer that a stone dealer actually that also sells a lot is kind of tied in here with indigo as you can see and you had your tune up for plus formulation out there against uh, several other micro microbials uh, in furrow and this in this particular case the tune up plus uh, product uh, last year's version uh, performed very 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 well and it against the check uh, almost 10 bushels. So we're pleased to share that. That'll be something that Paul continues to aggregate and send out. Um, let's look at what this product is. So we've taken what we learned last year and we got smart people like who were on the phone together and we were able to, and we were able to build uh, uh, this product in corn. Let's talk about corn for a minute. So in the bottom part of this pail, most of you, I think we've sent all the DSMs, a mock-up of the pail. The full functional prototype is done. It's uh, in, my, in my office. We're very excited about that. Uh, so in the bottom of this pail, we were able to get um, a partner to develop a zinc that worked well in seed singulation and worked well in terms of specific gravity and how it was coded. So we have 1.35 pounds of zinc in the bottom of this corn bucket. We have an 80-20 talc graphite with manganese and iron. And those products, uh, you know, I, I spent some time looking at some plots over time and zinc alone would perform pretty well. So we're really excited about that much zinc. So in right now, I think on FBN, zinc's about $32 a gallon. So that's kind of interesting. Um, then, and this is where we're going to tie in to Cliff Watrin. We, uh, the DPH folks have worked with us to design a dry flowable that's in a bio capsule. I think all of you have heard about that. That uh, includes uh, two azobacters and a group of bacillus and some uh, a trichoderma that Cliff will talk about. And 
that's safely kept in a capsule and that lid. And then our friends at uh, New Leaf have uh, licensed in a, a biostimulant and one of the other biocapsules. And together we are wildly excited about how we've layered so many agronomic benefits. The price point that you have for this is spectacular versus the competition. I think we'll talk a little bit about that later. So once you, that, that, that pail right there, this bucket pail um, covers 50 units of corn. So we treat the corn, not the, not the, not the acre. Um, so depending on your planting population, the price breaker can fluctuate. And then there's a scoop that comes with it and eat, there's 50 scoops in there. If you shake it really good, it's volumetric and there's one scoop per 80,000 units of corn. And that's, that's the product. I think most of you know about it. It's starting to get lots and lights of, uh, traction out here, but what's really in it and how does it work? And that's where I want to kind of transition into, um, uh, Roger uh, here a, a little bit, and I'm, I'm going to just cover the soybean version real quick. On the soybean side, we take the zinc out underneath and we uh, load two biocapsules with uh, a bio, uh, with the uh, a brazy rhizobium inoculant, and we have a, a soybean version of the of, of the tiramis the the tiramisum strain. Um, and that bucket right there is 40 units. We've had a tremendous amount of excitement about seed treaters that are going to go with this as their inoculant uh, delivery system versus liquid in their treater. And we see that growing uh, quite a bit. So enough of all that. Let's let's learn. Let's take this valuable time of yours to talk about New Leaf and why this uh, microbe is special and how it can drive uh, success on your farm and your, your customer's farm. Roger, you want to tie in here? Sure. Yeah, New Leaf is a, a fairly new company founded in 2013. Uh, we're centered around the uh, discovery, use, and uh, uh, distribution of methylotroph bacteria. Um, fairly new uh, type of bacteria that we've been looking at in agriculture the last decade or so, uh, almost by accident discovery. Uh, scientists at Rutgers were, were looking at plants and noticing that most of them had a, a bacteria that created a pink film on there. And, uh, you know, most things aren't an accident. So they started testing why and found out that most, if not all plants have a symbiotic relationship with a methylotroph bacteria. So that's the focus for New Leaf is to find out the strains that interact with the plants the best and uh, discover how they work. Typically, if we're applying this product to a seed, like a terrace product, um, immediately after planting, it starts to colonize the roots, but also colonize the stem and leaf as well. Um, once it's established, um, the PPFM molecule, molecules, microbes tend to uh, release exudates in the soil that uh, help up the uptake of manganese and iron and other nutrients. So, uh, we're building up the plant's vigor, we're building up the plant's health, that increases the root area, the root size, the diameter. So we end up with a bigger root system that also pulls in more nutrients and also moisture. Uh, so as we go through the season, these microbes continue to uh, colonize the root and the plant. So it's a season long uh, benefit for the plant. Um, plant vigor increases, like I said, plant health. Um, and it's at no cost to the plant. The, the methylotrophs, the way, why they are unique is they're not taking carbohydrates from the plants um, to live. They basically live off the methanol that's released as part of the cell division. So it's at a zero net cost to the plant. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, and this is typically the phenotypical response we see from the interaction of the seed, the environment, and our methylotrophs. Is typically we're seeing a, an increase in, in root area and plant vigor. If you look at the soybeans and corn, you can see that there is a, a larger amount of root area. What you can't see from these pictures is typically, not only are we increasing the root ball mass, but we're also increasing um, a lot of the secondary roots. And those are hard to see in these pictures. But as you see those long roots, most of them will be covered with smaller secondary roots, which are important for the nutrient uptake. And it's evident both corn and soy, but we are branching out into leafy greens and culinary herbs. Not as important to this group, but you can see that it does increase plant size and plant vigor over time. Let's go to the next one. 
we've been looking at these products in the field since 2016. We have a collection of small plot testing with uh, private CROs and with side by sides with farmers. Uh, 2020, we um, branched off to the intent group, looking at uh, more detailed uh, farmer trials, getting uh, more information collected out in the field. And in 2021, we went with ag ingenuity for uh, some additional infield measurements on mass and uptake and uh, uh, further data. So we, we do have a fairly large collection of data in the field at this point. We continue that again in 2022 uh, with more of the uh, private CRO trials and the farmer side by sides. As you can see, we have several hundred worth of trials. I'll go ahead and the next slide. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm jumping back and forth. It's early in the morning. No, uh, but what we take out in the field, uh, we have access. We're at the uh, Donald Danforth Center in St. Louis, which is across the street from Bear, and they have some wonderful tools that we have access to. And one of those is the digital imaging root traits, or DIRT, very clever name. Basically, we're able to take larger plants out in the field that you would usually not be able to look on a wind riso and bring them into the, the greenhouse, clean them off, take an image of those and measure the root systems. So we're able to look at the phenotype response of any plant that we're testing on and, and see what the response is, measure that response in the field and be consistent with our claims on our products. We're increasing, again, the root area, the rooting depth, rooting width, a number of root tips. Uh, and, and again, on this one, it, it's hard to see, but it's really those secondary roots. Uh, I mean, the, the deep roots great for reaching the moisture and uh, uh, plant stability, but it's those secondary roots as you'll see on the plants on the right. Um, the secondary roots are really uh, where we see our, our increase. Um, this is soybeans uh, with Terrace and 401, and that's in your uh, soybean product. Um, again, the root area is great, but what we find out with soybeans is they naturally like to uh, increase the population of methyl trust. They'll release their own exudates that increase the population <laughs> as well. Um, one of our future slides is going to talk about an increase in iron uptake uh, and manganese. Uh, iron is essential for nodulation for legumes. So legumes tend to uh, cultivate methyl troughs in the soil. We basically concentrate and deliver that when it's needed early at planting. Uh, this is what we look like on corn. Again, there's a, a good increase in early season vigor. Um, and that early season vigor is going to set your, your uh, yield potential. I mean, once you reach V4, V5, if the rest of the season is great and you had a very poor early season, you're never going to catch up with yield. Our, our goal is to set early season vigor early so that we can set that yield potential higher. Again, it's dependent on the rest of the season, the management, the field, and the fertility, and of course, this year, the rainfall. But we will at least want to set the yield potential high in case things do go right, we can chase that higher yield. And these are the results. Uh, We've been seeing, uh, unlike a lot of biologicals, our wind rates are above 70%, 75 for soy and 80% on corn. Uh, the two bushel advantage on soybean, I've seen better. We're seeing better this year, but this is the number we've been going off of with the intent and ingen ag ingenuity trials. Um, the root area, again, I think we're losing roots digging these up in the field. I think that uh, actual percentage is larger. But let's get down to the bottom where it's a 20% increase in tissue uh, iron concentrations. And again, iron is essential for chlorophyll uh, photosynthesis. It's essential for nodulation in legumes. Um, basically, iron carries the oxygen in the plant. So all the other processes that use oxygen, iron is essential. And we're bringing in, not that iron is more available, but we're actually pumping it into the plant at higher concentrations. And the same is true uh, for corn, but we also see increases in manganese um, and manganese, again, is uh, essential in photosynthesis, the separation of the water molecule and also in plant health. Um, it tends to produce lingons in the, in, the, in the soil roots and so that resists disease. So you, again, just have a healthier, more vigorous plant overall. And as far as taking methylotrose, we, again, identified it in the field, but taking it to a commercial product is a little bit different thing. A lot of people don't understand the difficulties in taking a, a great idea and making it into a product. So initially we had to see if we could take a methylotrope and add to a seed lubricant and then, you know, test it to where we could see that it wasn't affecting the, the performance of the, uh, the um, lubricant. So we, we set up a series of lab tests that we could test whether or not we were causing any uh, plugging in the tubes or any uh, bulking up. Uh, we took that to the lab and found out that, yeah, we look like we look good. So we go down to the next step of, you know, can we have shelf life with these products? And, and thanks to the setup with 
your tune-up product uh, being separate, uh, there is no uh, issue with shelf life. A lot of the competing products you'll see out there with talc, uh, talc will kill almost anything that's biological after seven days. Uh, it's pulling all the moisture out of the product. Uh, so being able to be separate uh, from the talc lubricant as we are with tune-up plus is uh, essential. Uh, if you see those products out there and if you can pull out those products and look for the, the living microbes in there, you'll you'll find very few if you find any. So we were able to see that, you know, uh, our mixing with the problem, with, uh, mixing with the talc was not a problem. And then we took it to the field to measure singulation and plantability. Uh, we were actually able to uh, follow a planter across the field at 20%, 50%, 70, 80%, um, pull up the planter, take seeds out of the seed tube and, and do uh, actual counts on the seed. And you see at the 20, 50 and 80 for both corn and soy, um, there really is no difference. Yep. So if you're applying this product across there, it's not all going out the front. It's not all falling to the bottom. Uh, we see a consistent coverage across the field. And one of the things that really surprised us was from our earlier treatments in the field where we use a seed treatment, a liquid slurry to apply, we would reach our 1,000 um, CFUs per seed, and that's colony forming units. So that's basically the bacteria counts. Uh, we would reach our threshold of 1,000 and consistently stay there. But going out through the planter box with the same application rate, we're able to get up to 10,000 uh, bacteria per seed. So not only is it a great system for us, we're being uh, a gram positive. We don't like to be mixed in slurry. It, it uh, degrades our shelf life uh, very quickly. But not only that, we get better seed coverage across the seed. One of our scientists said, well, if you just cover the top of that seed, you might do better. Um, this is not an indication of coverage. It's just the amount of CFUs per seed, but we are very pleased uh, with the application going out to the planter box with the TuneUp Plus. Uh, it's beneficial for us and you're getting a much better product. So just to drive that home, this is only one component of TuneUp Plus as well. I mean, this is uh, this bio capsule that we, the, 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 the utility patent pending and this this teramisin this is this teramisin is really showing up well this year. Um, I want to thank Roger and the New Leaf team for their investment in this research to prove to all of us, including I mean everybody, <laughs> that we actually can get more live cell per seed with the grind and the total mix of this program than other other application methods. You all have a world class delivery device for a very very active. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, there's not a lot of people with MTROPS in the market. I think New Leaf might yeah, be the yeah. only one. Um, the way that that, 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 grant, that that microbe doesn't take energy away from the plant by using it, burning the methane and then helping those. We've seen really, really good results, and we're just thrilled that you were and able playing to- well with the products. Again, this is a whole product concept. The manganese and the iron and the graphite top, uh, we're able to take that and push that into the plant. So it's a great interaction with all the other components of the product. And like I said, it's an ideal delivery system for us. It does well with what else is in the, the container. Uh, it's a full, complete product. And uh, we're, we're very glad to be a part of this product. Thank you. So now that's one of the mic, that's one of the bio capsules right here. Thank you very much, Roger. Uh, we'll have some Q&A or pop in a question for them. Um, now we're going to go over to um, another part of the biocapsule that has a consortium of microbes. And it's going to get pretty techy, but, you know, this is the deeper training, right? We have very simple ways we can talk about this, but we want to go to the next level with you all so that you understand there is deep science here and people that have worked really, really hard to understand the interaction of these microbes with soil and plants. So with that, I'm going to go back down and um, through this data and, and get to a slide that Cliff Watron is going to has been kind enough to prepare. Cliff, do you want to roll in here? You bet. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rob. So before I, I dive into the specifics here, I just you know listening to Rob and Roger, I want to make sure, and I'm you know we're all on the same page. This delivery system is perfect for these microbe consortiums. Some are very resilient, but many of these bacteria or fungi, the reason they haven't been successful is to deliver them live to the seed has really been a challenge. If they're applied at the plant, a corn production plant ahead of time, 
and sit for months with other chemicals on that seed, um, a lot of these are just not resilient enough uh, to be alive when you get to the field. So, you know, uh, listen, I just my hats off to Meristem on this on this design um, of, of this delivery system. It really opens doors up to do a lot of things with this unique micro package that we've included here. So I, you know, I think, you know, this, this just ups the ante in terms of the performance potential. And when that stuff goes on the seed and is planted, it's, it's going to be all very viable when it goes in the ground. Now, tune up corn plus, um, what are some of the unique features? And I got, I got all the species listed here. If, if, if for nothing else I want to leave you with today is there's two nitrogen fixing bacteria in this mix. So there's other products on the market. There's the pivot material. There's the stuff from Invita. There's other people making claims. But what you have here are two nitrogen fixing bacteria. These are Isotobacter, the first two I've listed there. And these are a great case where um, they're delivered properly with the system where these two um, Isotobacter can remain alive get to the soil alive, be right around the seed where you need them, where the plant can utilize, can utilize the, the, uh, the benefits of, of that. You know, they're not, they're not a foot away or two feet away in the soil. And uh, those two azotobacter, there's two different species here. They can fix nitrogen from the atmosphere and help and make that, that additional nitrogen more available to the plant. So um, this is a really uh, a step change in, in uniqueness to be able to deliver these two species in a very healthy manner at a very high rate. Um, the other thing before I get into the other species is we're, you know, the other key thing is so you can deliver the live bacteria, you got this unique delivery system, then there's a choice of the, the organisms we've got here. But another big thing is, and Meristem has stepped up. Um, we're putting on an extremely high loading rate. Um, more is better, okay, when it comes to biological material. More is better. And we're putting effectively 65 billion spores or these colony forming units um, per acre out there when, when you make this application. And as indicated with the previous slides, it's very uniformly distributed on the seed. So it's a perfect delivery system. But I maybe come up for air. I see a few chat uh, uh, things going on here too. And Rob, you can help me with some of those if there's some questions. Yeah, so you got yeah. the two. If I, if there's nothing else, I want you to remember from today's discussion. Oh, there's right. two. Back up again to the corn. There's yeah. two of these uh, um, 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 nitrogen fixing bacteria. Back up one more slide, if you could. Sorry I about think, that. Man. There we go. Got it. Yeah, I think one I had a typo there and said it was corn. Uh, um, then we've got another six uh, bacteria, a combination of bacteria and beneficial fungi. And, uh, you know, listen, uh, the, the nitrogen fixing component's great, but these, these other species like the Bacillus emlicophacens, they do unique things. They grow with the roots. They form a film. They protect from pests like nematodes and, and phyto, uh, phytopathogens, diseases. And uh, they also help with nutrient availability. These bacteria are a key component to that utilization of, of the inherent fertility in the soil and help break down the organic matter in the soil and the residue to make these nutrients more available. So what you have is a consortium of eight highly active biological materials in this mix delivered in a perfect delivery system and uh, at, at an extremely high rate. So. I wanted to have kind of one cheat sheet here for the tuna plus on, on corn and and to, to kind of focus in on uh, there's nothing like this in the industry. And I don't know, Rob, if I'm missing something here, if you want to add to it. But, you know, no, I, I, think, I think that there's a couple questions here. Let's get those addressed uh, on the chat, because I think, uh, you know, one of the questions is, has the increased iron concentration? shown any benefit on high pH areas where iron deficiency is prevalent. I think that could go to both the mtroph uh, discuss, discussion and or these. I don't know if we've broken it down that level um, uh, of, of data at this point, but I do know we're seeing increased iron levels in, 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 in tissue tests. Can you speak to that further, Cliff or Roger? 
Yeah, I'd, well, I'll let Roger ahead. talk on soy here a bit and, and the iron. Go ahead, Roger. Yeah, that's kind of the areas we're, we're hoping to market this product in is a high pH area from the Dakotas down to Texas. Um, finding areas where we can do testing and get reliable results is what's holding us back. We do see response, but again, side by sides or areas that are in drought condition, we don't always get consistent yield response, but that is a, a focus for us. Once we saw that iron intake, that's the first thing that popped into our minds was uh, that high pH area. Cliff, would you add anything there? No, I think you mentioned tissue samples, and that's uh, that's the canary in the coal mine. So if you can start picking up a trend, which I, I think you've seen with these products and with improved tissue samples, that you're heading in the right direction. Okay. The other question is the seven day window on microbes. So let's dive into that real quick. So the whole the whole point here is to create a really really convenient package that makes. A lot of the farmers you all serve have hired men or women out at the at the at the at the uh, planter. Number one message is use TuneUp Plus, however you're using talc today. But it's so elegant, and you got to get your head around this. All you got to do is wait till right before you're actually going to plant. So if it rains, don't push the buttons. Don't treat the box until you actually know you're going to plant. And as long as you don't deploy the bio capsule. You're as you're as you're beautiful. So yeah, and, and and Rob, uh, for us, I, I don't know about the rest of them. I would assume they're even maybe hardier. But once you actually treat the seed, we're good for 90 days. Uh, right. When I reference the seven day window, it's the competing products that that mix the microbes in with the talc in the jug on the shelf. Great I'm point to show you the real benefit for the, the delivery system is keeping those separated until they're treated on the seed. But once we're on the seed, we've got 90 days there is no issue with oh my gosh it's you know eight days after i treated this on there uh no that that's not the, the intent of that one it's just to show you that um you have to get to the seed treatment alive that's what the great system here is but once we're on the seed uh, again we, we've got 90 days there is no rush there we've got we we don't have all the data put together but we're so excited to go head ahead against pivot bio and anybody else we're gonna have more live cells per seed in this delivery system than almost any microbe uh delivered to date uh and we're, we're going to get the coverage so great point roger so once it's applied you get longer but if you deploy and let it sit it's seven but the bottom line, I want a message out there is just don't 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 deploy the bio capsule to you know you're going to put that on 50 units or 40 units on the soybeans. That's that's the point of the uh, of the utility. Anything else? Want anybody want to add there? Or? No, and what I just add once it's in the soil too, it's good to go. That soil buffers yeah. it, and uh, you know I've had questions before on okay, it's sat a day or two, we got it, and it is you know. Are you concerned about it sitting in the soil? Once you're in the soil, it's game on. You're ready to go. Exactly. Okay. All right. I think that's supposed to be soybeans. Let's. Uh, yeah. Yeah. My apologies. If you could just kind of uh, wrap this up just a little bit, so we have time. If you have about three, four minutes, I don't want to cut Mario off completely. <laughs> yeah, I think just for the prophase. Uh, corn as well or the prophase products there's a unique blend of, of biological material in there as well again it's deployed in a packet that gets mixed so it's it's a again a very unique delivery system and I've, I've tried to highlight why these various organisms have been selected and uh, you know there's a lot of thought that goes into the species mix to offer agronomic nutritional benefits so two very nice packages we're very excited I think it's it's in the delivery method and picking the right species and getting a high rate. And this is just a picture I wanted to throw in to say, hey, sure. you, you could see you can see how these organisms delivering with the seed puts it in the perfect spot where the plant can utilize it. Once that seed starts germinating and throwing out a, a shoot and a root tip, these these many of these bacteria actually reproduce and form a film and grow throughout the season. So help with that nutrient availability and protection help with that early establishment, but even late in the season, you can see an effect from these. So um, I think delivering it live into the, the <clears> right <throat> spot, right right on the seed, um, really accomplishes a lot of things, okay? Fantastic. Right. So 
Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, if you can still hang on for other questions that come up, I'd be very grateful. Um, we got Dr. Cirillo here. Um, we have, as you guys know, I don't know what the actual data, about half the U.S. market doesn't have liquid infro, half does. Um, maybe it's not half, but it seems pretty much 50-50 as we travel around. Um, you know, there's a lot of different combinations. You know, this TuneUp Plus uh, is obviously works great in, in a, a, a soybean planter that doesn't, very few have liquid in a corn planter uh, that doesn't or in conjunction. And, and we also, in, in the markets where we have, in the, we're Rob Seco and there's a lot of streamlined dealers, you have some pockets with huge amounts of liquid and furrow, the precision planning folks, the folks that want to put on uh, that are doing a lot of things in furrow to drive that crop, high yield guys. And we have a world-class product uh, in what's called Pro Phase Plus. I'm gonna start with data. Last year, we, we, we had a product called Pro Phase Plus Transit, which is the same thing as Pro Phase Plus. We just reduced the number of SKUs. So Pro Phase Plus is this product in the portfolio for Streamline going forward. You all did your own work. Uh, Rob Seco plots at Storm Lake in Lexington. This product performed really, really, really well. And this is data that you all produced. It just came back. We're thrilled with it. Uh, and we actually took another step with Stoller's help uh, through licensing to even differentiate further because some of this market is starting to get convoluted. And we want to give you and the seller something really, really uh, differentiated in the market. And with that, I'm going to have you share your screen, um, Mario. Um, and uh, I'm gonna stop share. And if you wanna take share. Can you see that? Yes, sir. All right, perfect. So let me actually <clears throat> move forward. No, I really appreciate the, the invitation today. Uh, learned a lot. I actually, in the past, I, I use some of these biologicals. I'm a big believer of biologicals and, and I agree when it comes to biologicals, the more is better. And obviously it had to be alive to work. Uh, when it comes to hormones, uh, more doesn't mean better. Um, and, you know, it's actually the um, combination of hormones and the actually stability of the hormone inside the jug as well. So so that consistency, uh, you know, will be key to success. So just, um, you know, and, and as Rob and, and the Meristem team, you know, knows this can, can go probably for a full day in terms of hormone training, but uh, we're going to keep it short here for a few minutes. Uh, let me actually see if I can eliminate this here. Uh, there you go. So when it's, uh, you know, when you're looking at plant hormones, we got five main hormones here, uh, you know, that, that we need to concentrate on. The three on the right are growth hormones, and the ones on the left are stress hormones. So when you look at a seed, the levels of uh, abscisic acid uh, that are in the seed are going to be higher because you don't want that seed to be germinating before it actually is planted. Uh, so you don't want any BV puri in the field. You don't want any sprouting, you know, earlier. Um, so at the end of the day, I mean, you need, you need that, but you also need to dilute that when it comes in contact with the soil and when it's time for that plant to, to germinate. We're going to concentrate more on these three here, oxen, cytokine, and uh, gibberellings. And... Um, in Stoller, we say that roots are the brains of the plant. And, and the reason why we say that is because four out of those five hormones uh, are producing the roots. Um, the other thing that is extremely important is that even if you develop that massive root system that, that we all want to have uh, to create some success uh, for the plant throughout the life cycle, those root tips are the ones that are producing the hormones and they are being uh, you know, produce every seven to 14 days. So if you end up with a big, you know, drought or, or some sort of abiotic stress, uh, some of the hormones are going to be compromised. Um, so just briefly, auxin, um, we have two different types of auxins, abscisic acid and, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, IBA and, and IAA. And both of them are going to be activating uh, cell division, but also the enlargement of that cell division. And, and the reason why I put a, a lot of this in there is so you know that there's many functions there uh, for, for this particular IBA and IAA. One of the biggest one is going to be uh, proper root development, but too much of that will inhibit also 
uh, the branches in the root. So we want to be careful how much. And that's why uh, the amount is not as important as it is the, the proportion that is in the compound. Uh, so that is something that is good. And this is the only hormone that is actually being produced in the apical mare stems. The other thing that, that you need to, to remember is that oxygen is going to be flowing down um, uh, to the plant and cytokinin actually is going to be moving up. So here is a picture where if you actually put some oxygen in the plant, you're going to develop a, a bigger root system. Um, remember that there's some uh, herbicides out there like 2,4-D and the camber that are oxygen uh, herbicides. So a bigger concentration is obviously going to be an issue. So we want to make sure that we put the right amount uh, at the right time. Uh, cytokinin, this is crucial for cell division so and differentiation. And this is the one uh, hormone that is going to create that plant uh, foliage, you know, above ground. And obviously, by creating that plant foliage, you're also going to be triggering uh, oxygen formation in the, you know, apical meristem. So the beauty about that is that it can complement each other. And when they touch, basically, they produce new uh, tissues or, or reproductive sites. And gibberellic acid induces germination uh, and is going to be promoting that even emergence. Uh, it also acts, you know, as a large, uh, in, in large uh, cells and attracts, you know, sugars and, and so many other options in the plant. So these hormones are extremely important early uh, in the season, but also throughout the whole cycle of the plant. Um, ethylene is going to be that, that um, if you think about ethylene, is is the stress hormone, but it's also, it's like a blood pressure. If it's too high, it's bad. If it's too low, it's bad. You got to have some pressure to leave. So you got to make sure that you're controlling that, um, you know, throughout the life cycle of the plant. So, so it doesn't wrap it up too quickly and lose the opportunity to, to produce yield. Um, and again, abscisic acid, the last one is seed dormancy. Um, and, and abscisic acid can be triggered by too much ethylene. Uh, it can be triggered uh, by different stressors like, uh, you know, drought. Uh, that is the hormone that is in charge to closing those leaves uh, in the corn plant where you, you know, is going through a lot of uh, stress. So the stomata closes, uh, there's some potassium, you know, uh, you know, um, uh, directed uh, cells that are going to be closing so the water doesn't get lost and so on. So all of that, I mean, there's a lot of uh, information of each of the hormones and each of them can be one hour or two hours each. But, uh, you know, what Stoller has done is created a hormone model and it's uh, complicated, but the, the beauty is that each of the hormones, if you look at abscisic acid, you know, it ends, when you harvest that seed, the level of abscisic acid in the seed ends up, you know, high. So when you plant that seed, obviously it's gonna be uh, at a high level. You gotta basically get that uh, abscisic acid lower and you gotta have that gibberellic acid higher so you can, you know, trigger that germination. And then once the root system start you know, uh, coming out of the, you know, plant, uh, cytokinin start producing, uh, then obviously the foliage start, you know, being generated uh, above the surface and then auxins start kicking in and so on. So the biggest goal for us is to create an environment at the first stage of development. So that plant um, is as healthy as possible to be able to produce all those hormones that is going to carry that plant throughout the cycle and maximize the yield potential. Um, so just a little bit uh, here on our pro phase plus, I mean, we're really excited to, to, to for you guys to have access to this product. It's the only product that, that has four growth promoters. As you can see, cytokinin is at a higher rate. Um, Giverellic acid is, uh, you know, 0.005%. That is enough to trigger that, you know, seed to germinate efficiently. And then you have two different type of, um, you know, auxins here that are going to be helping uh, with that root system, um, you know, to, to get, you know, uh, growing um, as good as, as possible. So the, the beauty about that is that that combination is going to uh, create that, that uh, you know, plan ability to produce that root system that is much needed. And uh, the biggest thing here, and I think, uh, Rob, you mentioned and, and, and Cleve, um, you know, if you have uh, a synchrony in, in the emergence, you're going to prevent that yield loss. Um, precision planting has indicated that if a plant, you know, emerges three days past the other ones, uh, you may be actually losing significant amount of yield. And that's what we want to avoid. 
Um, so here is a, a picture of you know what they've done. Uh, so here here is uh, the seeds you know emerging on day one. And if you have a couple that are kind of struggling in there, actually you know two uh, of those emerging uh, out of ten you know at a later date can cost up to thirty two bushels per acre. You know. Um, you know, lost. And that's not difficult to, to see. I mean, you can actually, if a, if a plant is, is left behind a couple of leaves, uh, it's pretty much a weed. So we want to avoid that and we want to create that environment and that plant structure that is going to allow those plants to be at an even uh, competition in the field. So this product is going to create fast emergence, uh, improve the, the synchrony of that emergence, which is key to success. Uh, build that root system that is going to be excellent for nutrient uptake. Remember that a lot of these <laughs> micronutrients that we're putting as a pop-up fertilizer, uh, when we look at micronutrients installer, we don't look at uh, those nutrients as, uh, you know, plant food. We look at them as cofactors for hormone synthesis. Everybody knows that zinc will upregulate oxygen production. You know, if phosphorus, you're going to have that energy necessary for that root system, you know, to grow. But then manganese, auxins as well, and so on. Every single micronutrient is going to have a um, an important component for that uh, hormone synthesis, uh, and, and which is really good. But then that plant arch architecture and, this, and the speed to, to get that row close uh, is going to be also crucial to, to keep, um, you know, uh, that potential and the other key benefit of this is the stability of the product in the jug uh, the good thing about Proface plus is that if you're going to have a jug sitting on the shelf on the shelf for two years oh, well. you're going to guarantee that whatever is in the label is going to be in the jug as well you're not going to have degradation oh, well. and, and that's pretty much uh you know good both uh Rob, can you still hear me yeah, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. We better, okay, perfect. So yeah, we'll let you, wrapping it up here just a little bit, sir. Just to to wrap it up here, cytokining above above ground plant development, gibralic acid germination, and then you get your overall plant structure and yeah. root system development. Here is an example of the water base, uh, you know, uh, products that are in the in the market. There's a lot of degradation uh, through time for some of the components. Prophase Plus is going to have pretty much stability for two years. Uh, you know, which which is definitely helpful if you're gonna you know carry some uh, material you know to the next season. Some results, uh, you guys had some results. We've been doing this for a while. Uh, you, this is 18 locations across the Midwest and then some uh, uh, you know other states that are you know neighboring. 5.4 bushel per acre with a four ounces per acre. I know that you're gonna be promoting three ounces because you got a whole package there, which is great. Um, see, we have another one, uh, even though this product is going to be in four, we also uh, can use it, you know, foliar, uh, but, uh, you know, the, it's similar, 5.35. And this is just the last one here, uh, Rob, uh, some some uh, data wow. that can show that it can actually trigger, you know, a significant amounts of, of, of yield. Now, we saw this product in uh, precision planting last year, uh, giving us uh, 16 bushel advantage in four. Uh, so we know that it can work in low yield environments, but also in the high yield environments. So mm. that's that's everything that I had. I mean, I know that uh, it went kind of quick, but, but, <laughs> but there's a lot. It's a lot, uh, and I'll be happy to uh, to get together at some point in time and maybe go deeper into these hormones, which are crucial for the success of the plan. No, I uh, we all have a tremendous resource, and these three gentlemen that joined us today, I, I really. Um, the, the charge here, since we've got these understood, we want you to understand that there's a tremendous amount of research behind what you're selling. So let's just go into this Prophase uh, product here and understand what it is. It's extremely unique. I don't know. I'm, there would be a product out there called uh, Triad and Fosters that would be somewhat similar. Um, BW Fusion would have something similar. But other than that, you gentlemen and ladies on the phone have an incredibly unique position with this. So you're going to get a jug called Prophase Plus. It's a two and a half, two by two and a half in the case. Each jug will have a packet on it. You tear the packet off, you pour it in, you shake it up, you put it in. We're going with a three ounce rate. 
or I think the label says uh, two to four, about three ounces is what we're going to talk about. Um, you have the four-way that Dr. Sherrill just walked you through, and then you have a dry version, a more concentrated version for uh, um, uh, mixing in of the uh, consortium uh, or the team of uh, bacillus and azobacters and other uh, microbes that are going to go in this product. Extremely unique, extremely good price point when you look at all the value. And for your precision planning guys, your high yield guys, uh, this is a great uh, uh, product to mix in with any starter fertilizer program that uh, one of your customers might be running. You might not get the starter program. A lot of farmers are running real, really uh, elaborate starter programs, maybe a riser from Nutrien. You know, uh, they can back off to just a plant food if they really believe they need the plant food and uh, go with the, uh, spike this in at three ounce rate. You're going to do you're gonna do a lot of good. Um, so um, we're, Paul, we're right at the hour. Um, I knew with uh, this many great speakers, we might run a little tight. Um, I have a, a couple of couple questions and we have more to go and I, I will put this out there a little bit further. I'll, I'll add some additional Q and A here, but one of the questions that always comes up is, you know, how do I recommend a product solution for in furrow uh, or at plant with the streamlined portfolio. Um, so I think the questions that really comes down to the questions you ask. And that question is, hey, tell me about how you're feeding the plant. Obviously, you're going to want to have um, residue release already on the foundation. Hopefully, they've managed their stable, their nitrogen with NCASE. And now you're going to, you know, what can you do in plant? It really comes down to me three or four things. How much labor do they have? What is their agronomist or their, their whole strategy for feeding the crop? Are they using in furrow or two by two to feed the crop? Or are they looking at those items as pop-ups? Um, or, you know, do they have, you know, no liquid at all on the planter? So in an environment where you have no liquid on the planter, it becomes really easy. We're going to be talking tuna plus corn and beans all day long. Where you have a, a farm operation that is, let's say, two by two, two by two and in furrow, which is a, a high yield environment. You know, that two by two, we love to have them go with sulfur and nitrogen. We don't want to change that at all. And then in furrow, uh, we want them to be, we want to find a way for them to um, maybe cheapen up their, um, uh, uh, plant food to a basic plant food and uh, spike that in with prophase plus or and or uh, if they take the zinc out of their liquid and go with revline excuse me go with uh, go with uh, tune up plus in the in the dry and then um, go with um, go with uh, um, Prophase Plus in the liquid as a spike to their current food. So it really gets breaks down and I'll, I'll, I'll try to break this down into some questions. Uh, thank you for those that put something on chat. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, I think we address, I'll add those here too, uh, Paul, to the material where we can, uh, where we can uh, uh, address the questions about Tuna Plus relative to survivability uh, of the microbes after deploying the biocapsule. Um, some, some competitors you're going to see out there, you're going to see in the, in the competitive overview in the planter box, you're going to see SaberX and a product from Rhodesian. Uh, there's also a product from Helena out and uh, a couple others that I'll continue the research. And then in the PGR space, you're going to see things like Ascend, Fosters, uh, BW Fusion 401. Again, I'll add that in. But I can tell you in both cases, there you have an incredibly unique uh, position with TuneUp Plus and Proface Plus. Question came in with Pivot Bar Marketing, uh, Pivot Bio Marketing, 40 pounds of nitrogen in the product. What kind of claims can we make with nitrogen fix up, fixing for TuneUp Plus? I think the Streamline leadership and the team that's been assembled around Streamline has kind of decided that. Uh, to not to make a, play, a claim on nitrogen fixing. Uh, Pivot Bio is, in my opinion, one of the best things that ever happened to us here at Streamline. 
I think that the 40 units of nitrogen on the seed, uh, they haven't been able to keep that, micro, which is a cool bug they've developed through gene editing. Their live cells per seed have not been high and that's why they have such variability. Um, Bottom line is it's really about nutrient use efficiency, which is bushels divided by nitrogen. And if we can get into nutrient use efficiency discussion side by side and our ROI, we'll beat them every time. We are not right now, Paul, unless you want to change that message, or I'd love Cliff Watrin or anybody else on the call's opinion on that. But we want to grow more bushels. We're not in this business necessarily remove nitrogen. Our farmers sell bushels and we want to grow bushels. No, that's our that's our message too. Yeah, absolutely. Any, anybody else have a thought? Uh, no, I just I just want to reiterate. Um, Pivot has two species in there, and it doesn't matter if they have a hundred species. If they're not delivered live and where they need to be, um, that's where they're seeing their inconsistencies. So, I think to 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 Rob, Rob's point. It's yield, it's plant health, it's it's uh, nutrient use efficiency, and uh, I think, frankly, this it, it take aside the nitrogen claims, you can go head to head against the pivot positioning and claims and other products like Invita, because we're delivering live organisms right where they need to be. Yeah, it's an exciting time. A so, Rob. Things. Yeah, please. This is Melanie. I just wanted to reinforce one thing that I consistently see in the field with both biological PGRs as well as synthetic PGRs. And so we talk a lot about being faster in our emergence, but even more important than that, I see consistency in emergence. And so when we talk about those real high yielding guys getting everything emerged within 72 hours, it, it truly is that consistency that's creating huge value. So yes, getting out of the ground and getting early vigor is fantastic and, and important, but consistent emergence, consistent ear set on height on the plant, all those things drive towards that high yield as well. And so I wanted to just share that perspective that it it is faster out of the ground, but it's that consistent piece that's bringing value as well. Thanks, Mel Mel. Um, so, hey, uh, we're over time. And uh, I want to just, in our next session, we will uh, also bring in uh, Ed Corgan, and he's going to do a little bit of a deep dive on the Nutribuse Zinc Up. Um, also, we want to just reiterate how great of a tandem cell residue release and tune up plus is. Uh, and this is kind of our, the value statement, right? You're going to have less labor, less fuel, less compaction, less skips, and more value from nutrients. You're going to fix nitrogen, and you're going to – it's a tremendous package, and it, you're going to be out there somewhere under $30 versus uh, if they try to do two things in the market, they're going to be way more than that. Um, we just saw some more data coming in on residue release. Uh, that'll be in here. It's showing up really, really well across lots of locations, and – I'd be remiss, Paul, not to remind, remind everybody on these utility products, every farm, every crop, every acre, make sure you're putting the OptiLine adjuvants to work. Uh, it's, in, uh, it's important. So um, thank you all for your time. Uh, thank you very much, Cliff and uh, Mario and Roger for your time. As, if there's not any other questions, Paul, do you wanna wrap it up? Yep. I just want to thank uh, our, our Streamline Ag partners that tuned in today. Um, our next webinar will be on the 13th of December, um, which, which or, I'm sorry, actually it will be on the 22nd of November, where we will talk about optimizing in-season genetics. So uh, a meeting invite will come out. And again, I will circulate the link for this webinar. Thank you to our speakers. And thank you for joining today. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Thank you.